You know, Miranda just... That's not fair. You see, uh, Miranda... That is not fair! Miranda, we'll just let Mike say his bit, then he can respond, OK? Well, Miranda, t too often, just will not listen to what I've got to say. Miranda, will you acknowledge that, in light of everything else we've spoken of this afternoon? Yes. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. I feel real progress has been made this session, real progress. But I want you both to reflect on everything we've spoken about this afternoon, yeah? And everything each of you has had to say to the other. We'll continue this exploration next week, OK? OK. Yeah, but well done. Well done, both of you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Kill them. <laughs> Date me up, people. Nobody likes Adrian Childs anymore. Right. Olive oil goes well with vanilla ice cream. Yes. Martin Sheen's been arrested over 70 times. Naughty boy. Gone with the wind drags on a bit. Prove it. Your hall carpet's starting to look a bit tatty. Right. Eamon Holmes could definitely have you. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> Cancel the fight. Uh, Toweling nappies are a pain in the ass to wash. Receive. You hardly ever see white eggs. OK. Uh, Stevie Wonder's put on three stone. Keep an eye on him. Ah, Martin, we need to catch up. Clear your desk, you're fired. What? <laughs> Jelly won't set with pineapple in. <laughs> your thing, sir. Right. Right. Thanks, Declan. You'd like to come with me? Hi there. What can I do for you? I'd like to use a sunbed, please. <laughs> Have you used a sunbed before? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Follow me. <laughs> Agent Sansibar, it's a privilege. Listen, we haven't got very long. Senex is due to land tonight, but so far there's nothing on the wires. You need to make contact with Chelman. So, so what? <laughs> You need to make contact with Chelman. Yeah, I, I think there's been some sort of mistake. I, I, I'm not, you know, agent Zanzibar. No, no, no. Right. I'm not. I'm not an agent. No, it's just you said I'd like to use a sunbed, please. I said have you used a sunbed before, and you said yes. <laughs> well, you'd really like to use a sunbed. Well, if that's possible, um, this is a tanning salon, right? I mean... Oh, bugger! <laughs> no, it's my fault. No, I can see now. I should have picked a better password. <laughs> It's just ducks flying south felt a bit old hat, and I did have the beavers making a comeback, but that's very hard to work into a conversation. <laughs> Not to worry, I'll just have ten minutes in one of the stand-up ones, please. And... Yeah, but I don't really think I should let you go now, you know. I mean, you now know all about Cello Man. Well, not really. I mean, I'd have forgotten all about him if you hadn't just mentioned him. I have just mentioned him. <laughs> but I really don't think this is any... <laughs> ah! What can I do for you? Uh, do you do spray tanning? Have you brought any paper underwear? Oh, no. I thought you provided it. OK. Wait there. <laughs> Good luck, Red Admiral. Go, go, go! <laughs> Yeah. Mm. 
My name is Dr. Tia. I live in Botswana, saving lives. Do you? <laughs> this is Komyango. The villagers thought an evil spirit had taken his breath away, so they sent him to the Matakalalewil, or Shemi. <laughs> poor Komyango returned to the village, ravaged and wheezing, his poor lungs strung out like gut across a racket. It seems the shaman spirits were not in a healing mood. I, on the other hand, was. <laughs> Superstition and mummery are so deeply ingrained in these beautiful, noble minds that even the evidence of their own eyes will not persuade them otherwise. I have no desire to change the culture of a continent, just the simple knowledge that I can do a little bit to earn their reverence is reward enough for a white devil like me. <laughs> Them yats is bare chung, isn't it? For shizzle, they're buff. We're in there big time, Brett. You know what I mean. The blonde one was eyeing my packet. You see her, clocking my unit and all this? It's a good look for you, man. You look well now in respect. You know what I mean? You can see all like my pants and this and that. Yes, you can see all your pants. If someone looks at you, they can see like all your pants. Yeah, they're looking over. It's bait blood. They're so much better than them girls we saw Tuesday. Them gyalden was butters. Mm. <laughs> Did you hear what my one said? This is her. Must be really frightening facing death in the skies every day. So this is me. Are you calling me chicken? Yeah, for sure. Are you saying I was scared and all shit up? Because I is nails, man. And I got my BCG, I didn't even cry. <laughs> These girls are class, though, isn't it? So we need to treat them classy. Isn't it, though? Classy. So, there's your drinks and shit. That's very kind. Um, we were just talking about the new Glenn Miller record. Oh, yes, we've been listening to it in our digs. It's wonderful. Glenn Miller? Shame, man. He's such a lamer. <laughs> Glenn Miller sucks ass. He's sold out big time. You know what I'm saying? Benny Goodman shits all over Glenn Miller. By the way, you owe us one and six? What for? The drinks? Oh, sorry, I thought you bought them for us. Duh. <laughs> That'd be like sexist. It'd be sexism, which is like racism, except it's against women, so it's like not as bad, but it's still really bad. By the way, I saw you clocking my packet just now. I'm sorry. So, like, would you like to go round the back of the hangar for tops and fingers? Actually, we're going to go and talk to our friends. Yes. I've never been so insulted in my life. You are so in there. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it, though? For sure. <laughs> I'm here in the Koikenhof Gardens in the Dutch university town of Leiden to see a truly remarkable tulip. This one. Semper Augustus, also known as the Viceroy. Believe it or not, the growth of an entire culture was founded on this pretty looking flower. The Dutch cultivated them and a craze was born. In 1634, it was recorded that a single bulb of this variety was exchanged for 1,000 pounds of cheese, eight pigs, 12 sheep, and a glazed porcelain commode. The Viceroy had been thought extinct for over 200 years. That is, until now. Just a few weeks ago, a single flower was found in a copse near Antwerp. And this is it. From this lone, priceless specimen, a once great variety of truly extraordinary cultural significance is to be revived by the horticult... Refrigerator has had its day, 
remember, dispose of it properly. Don't dump it in a residential area. Poor children could play in it and get trapped inside. Don't leave it on the roadside. Itinerants might find it, and it could end up back in a shop. <laughs> when dumping white goods, be responsible. <laughs> Go the extra mile. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then on Terry's stag do, we made him wear this pink miniskirt all night. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is nothing, that is nothing. <coughs> Doug's stag do, right? We get completely wasted. And when he's passed out cold in his room, we creep in. Shave one of his eyebrows oh. off. Seriously, <laughs> in his wedding photographs, he's like this. Honestly, he looks such a tit. He's got no eyebrow. I once played a really good stag joke that totally weirded the guy out. Oh, that was good. <laughs> this, this friend of mine, Simon, was getting married, and I, I got him to pass out after drinking loads of that uh, that green stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, um, Midori. Oh, Midori, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Potassium hypochlorate. Yeah, I, I got it from this Russian website. It rendered him completely unconscious. <laughs> anyway, he woke up in bed the next day, you know, couldn't remember anything about the night before or, or what I'd done to him. Yeah, he shaved his pubes off. Yeah. He shaved his pubes off. Yeah. His fiancée, Katie, was lying next to him, and she went down under the sheets to, you know, make his day a bit special. Oh. Anyway, no, he sort of laid back watching her, you know, a little bit woozy. Anyway, as soon as she started, he knew something was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, something was different. He just couldn't work out what. And then suddenly, Katie started laughing, you know. And he, he looked down at her, you know, and he realised he froze. His, his mouth dropped open because it, it wasn't her at all. It was me wearing a wig and a mask. <laughs> A bit too weird. Hello. Uh, yeah, hi. Big day. Uh, just a bit. Yeah. Here, June is getting married. Oh. Uh, yeah, look, sorry, I'm in a bit of a rush. I need to pick up some cash to pay the caterers before I get to the church, and I'm on double yellow. So. No problem, sir. How much did you want? Uh, Four hundred pounds, please. Okay, just pop your card in there. Now, were you aware that you're eligible for a credit card, interest-free until next September? So I'm not really interested. Uh, S sorry, uh, like I said, I'm in a bit of a rush. Uh, you literally just have to sign a couple of forms. Yeah, really sorry. Um, may maybe another time. We are able to offer you, as an opening offer, a free, all expenses paid, three star Clayton's Hotel City Break for two to Dusseldorf, including free transfers and complimentary champagne. Look, I'm getting married in less than half an hour's time. Might be a nice little wedding present, sir. It is not a percent. Look, if I've just got to sign a couple of forms. Marvellous. Just bear with me a second. No, no, wait. W wait! Mr. Duggan. Yeah? Hi. I understand you're interested in our credit card offer. Well, sort of. I mean, the thing is, I'm in a bit of a rush, so... Oh, it'll only take a second, and I imagine your, uh, wife will be very excited by the trip to Dusseldorf. The hospitality really is top class. Yeah, look, look, look I'm on double yellow, so I mean... Yes, yes, no problem. Shall we go into my office? Please have a seat. I'll be back in a jiffy. Uh, right. Um... You know, when you get to Dusseldorf, you really have got to try the mustard. And cut. <laughs> Sit down, please, Mr. Duggan. Actually, I've changed my mind. Sit down. So, Mr. Duggan, you want a credit card? Well, no, you see... I'm... We don't just give them out like sweets, Mr. Duggan. It's a grave responsibility. We've been doing a bit of digging. It seems that in the past you've developed, shall we say, a somewhat laissez-faire approach to making certain payments on time. S -s Sorry, what, what payments? A gas bill from your student days. Oh, God, yeah, but I mean... So you don't deny it? No, 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 I, I, I don't. That's better, Mr. Duggan. You seem contrite, Mr. Duggan. We are pleased to approve your application. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. 
Please, take this to the room opposite. Oh, and Mr. Dargan, enjoy Dusseldorf. I hear it has a thriving jazz fusion scene. <laughs> Olivia, mate. Who the bloody hell are you? Me? I'm... I'm Jeff. Jeff? Is that you? Oh, Carol, look, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I got caught up at the bank. What's going on? You've been gone five years, Jeff. I've, I've moved on. <laughs> I'm married to Barry. I've got a new family now. You don't understand. I got us this free weekend for two to Dusseldorf. They're going to pick us up from the airport. There's nothing there, Jeff. It's just a German town. <laughs> How do you think they can afford to just... Give it away. But... <laughs> Maybe you should lay off the credit cards for a bit. I may. Five percent cash back and a free trip to Antwerp. Pre-approved. Et avec ceci, nous concluons notre examen bref en français conversationnel. Derek, vous avez fait très très bien. Et je suis heureux de vous informer que vous avez réussi à l'examen avec la distinction. Oh, brilliant. Ah, en français, s'il vous plaît. Oh, euh, fantastique. Fantastique, eh bien, eh bien, eh bien. Alors, Madeleine, superbe, vous avez vraiment fait des efforts. Merci, merci beaucoup. Je vous donne un mérite. Ah, uh, j'espère que vous nous joindriez pour le cours intermédiaire. Euh, uh, oui. oui. Oui, oui, superbe, superbe. Ah, à bientôt. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. <rire> We know Hussaini's men have planted the EMP somewhere in this sector of the city, but to get its exact location, I'm going to have to hack their central network. I take it that's not going to be easy. I wish. Their firewalls and encryption algorithms are state-of-the-art. Well, can you do it? I don't know. Hang on, I might be onto something. There's a trace of server activity leading to a mainframe in Zurich. Christ, this could be it. Right, that EMP has got to be located and neutralized. No one leaves this room until we found it. Oh, I pretend I didn't hear that, Andrew. <laughs> so, your designated lunch hour begins in two minutes. Now, what do I always say? For staff to function, they have to luncheon. But what kind of a boss would I be if I didn't practice what I preach, hmm? Where would my staff morale meter be then? In this case, sir, I really don't think that matters. The EMP is about to detonate. And your blood sugar level's about to crash through the floor. Now, come on, you guys. They're doing a meal deal round the corner. Buy a roasted winter vegetable panini, get a free sparkling mineral water. Go on, get your coats, I'll bring the Sudoku. <laughs> And that's expected to last at least a fortnight, so do avoid that. Science now, and Britain's Einsteins are a go-go over a new theory which it's thought will revolutionise our understanding of life, the universe, and pretty much everything else. Heterotic supersymmetry is said to combine elements of string theory with a new take on, now hang on, quantum chromodynamics. Try saying that when you've had a few. And it's the <laughs> brainchild of Professor Alan King. Uh, Professor King, good morning. Good morning. Um, can you just briefly take us through this new theory of yours, in layman's terms? No. <laughs> All I'm after is, is just a, a, a broad stroke explanation, if you like. Uh, there isn't one. 
OK. Well, what if you were to, to take us th through the whole thing, starting with the real basics and just working our way up? OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we could definitely do that. Great. Uh, it will take quite a long time. Um, How long? 11 years. <laughs> Right, I'm, I'm being told we don't have quite that long. <laughs> um, Professor, some of our viewers are quite smart. Um, perhaps there is someone watching at the moment who's capable of understanding your theory? There, there, there isn't. How can you be so sure? Because Graham's on holiday and Chung Yao's dead. <laughs> Professor King, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> And so the evening had been replete with the requisite amounts of both Toodle and Pip, until things as they are wont to do on these occasions started to get somewhat out of hand. So much so that the old long arm of the L was obliged to pay us a visit. <laughs> then I believe I can deduce the fateful outcome of your soiree, sir. Remarkable, Veal. No doubt egged on by your fellow Idiots Club committee members, you informed the unfortunate constable that his shoelaces were untied before making off with his helmet. No, I smashed a glass in his face, stabbed him repeatedly with a steak knife, and then kicked his head in. I really have the most terrible nigger boop. <laughs> right. I gather the young constable clings to life, as the poets would have it. But even so, I expect the peelers will be more than a little keen to whisk me off to choke it. Indeed, sir. So now then, Veal, I need you to devise one of your famous schemes to extract me from this ghastly syllabub. <laughs> Perhaps... If so, were to find someone with an uncanny resemblance to yourself, sir. Of course, Cousin Thomas. We're the very spit of each other. Brilliant, Veal. And if you cudgel him into a stupor and cut out his tongue with a paring knife, he won't be able to barely well defend himself in court. <laughs> Veal, you've done it again. Have I, sir? Most gratifying, sir. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> mm. What? Phil, no, we can't. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be hygienic. Perfect. Because what I've got in mind is very dirty indeed. <laughs> no! Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, Jim Talon! <laughs> Only joking, his face! <laughs> oh, it's a cracking facility, this, isn't it, Aloha? Hello. Actually, no, hang on, Jim. <laughs> no, not Aloha. What's going on? How long were you down there? Oh, er, uh, just under four minutes, yeah. Trying to starve me brain of oxygen to try and forget me wife for enough with a DJ at our wedding reception. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, Jim. How are you coping? Yeah, all right, Phil. Let it go, mate. You're like a dog with a bone, you shit house. <laughs> I think I need to starve me brain of oxygen again. See you in a bit. <gasps> Come on. He's just a bit lonely. Yeah, I know. I just think I'm getting compassion fatigue, or at least Jim Talon fatigue. He's just everywhere you look. <laughs> oh. oh, it's the business, this, isn't it? Hi. I'm so relaxed I could pee. <laughs> Relax, OK? Hoa kahi kahi ke aloha. Uh, do you mind doing the other foot, Phil? Uh, have you already done that one? No! God <laughs> almighty! Oh. No, I keep telling you, Jim Talon! Hey! <laughs> hey, Phil, you want to give your shoulder a wash? You've got a bit of a mark there. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not a mark. Well, it is in a way, honey. It, it's a mark of our love. We went to the tattooist today, Jim. It wasn't planned. We were just feeling a bit reckless. I ain't enough respect, Phil. Let's have a look. There you go. Mm. Oh, a uh, hi, kai, kai, hello. Uh, what's that mean? <laughs> be one in be love. Be one in love. <laughs> oh, that is nice. And look, it's mine, look, you see? Oh, that is so beautiful, eh? You guys have got me in tears now, because, you know, you two are just so happy. Come on. <laughs> you know, the really amazing thing, I got a tattoo today as well, yeah. Mine's of a DJ being strangled by a snake. <laughs> I can make the snake move, look. <laughs> What's the status? Ruth's managed to get through the primary firewall, but it's still locked down pretty tight. How long? Ten minutes, 15 at the outside. Well, we might not have that, Ruth. We're on borrowed time as it is. And coming back from lunch via the toy museum really didn't help. <laughs> I could um, try the satellite networks. Do it! Come on, that EMP could detonate any second. Ruth, check the intel again. So I can only do one thing at a time. No, it looks like you could do with some help. I think I may have the solution. I'm assigning a new top-notch specialist to your team. Oh, thank you, sir. Meet Susie from Wellness in the Workplace. What? She's a masseuse, Andrew. Tension is the real ticking bomb. 
Time to take off that stress vest. Sir, this is ridiculous. Come on. We really don't have time for this. Sir, I think I've cracked their sanctuary protocols. What now? What? Ah! Just try and relax, sir. Don't go asking for a happy ending. <laughs> you know, we're often accused of being a pair of old stick in the butts. Overly conservative, set in our ways. But nothing can be further from the truth, could it, Fife? Not true at all. Mm. I'm very fond of Turkish food, for example. <laughs> he is, he is. And Fife here enjoys experimenting with recreational drugs. <laughs> what is the pharmaceutical du jour, Fife? Amphetamines mainly, some MDMA. <laughs> you like to sprinkle it over your cornflakes, don't you? Well, it depends what it's been cut with. Mm. <laughs> And just to show that we're not scared of moving with the times, we've even decided to upgrade our piano. Brabants of Fife 2.0. And I believe you have a costume change to go with that. Oh, yep. <laughs> and I hope this song goes some way to prove what a pair of swingers we actually are. What must it be like to be gay? <laughs> In truth, I can't honestly say To me there's something silly About another man's willy <laughs> That would really only get in the way What must it be like to be gay? What do you do? How do you do it? What do you say? In the bedroom do you toss a coin? Or can you just assume that each of you will know exactly who does what to who. <laughs> Better to give than to receive, they say. I wonder if that's true. When you're gay, when you're gay, when you're gay. It's not all about the bedroom when you're gay. There's Liza Minnelli. Old subs on the telly. And Ronnie Cray. <laughs> we get a lovely camp perspective on all sorts of things in life. Interior design becomes a joy and not a strife. And cottaging no longer means wet weekends with the wife. When you're gay, when you're gay, when you're gay. But let's be serious for a minute, if we may. It can't all be fun and laughter being gay. Certain folks intolerance puts a spanner in the works. One suspects it's double bluffing. Perhaps they're jealous of the perks. Cause you can drench yourself in sequins and party till it hurts when you're gay. Secondary firewall down. Come on, Tom. Iterating the access codes. 20 seconds. We're through. We just need to retrieve the satellite coordinate. Coming through now. Oh. What? What? We've lost power, sir. Well, the entire network's gone down. Everything's offline. 5.30, gentlemen. <laughs> Go home. 